today's GCSE chemistry video is all to do with nanoparticles. So, as the name suggests, they are extremely small. They are between 1 to 100 nanometers in size. And if we're saying that a nanoparticle is 1 nanometer in size, that means it's the equivalent of 1 times 10 to the minus 9 meters. They're made up of just a few hundred atoms. Now, because they're so tiny, it means that they have a very large surface area to volume ratio. And lots of the properties of nanoparticles depend on their very small size. So here's an example of a maths question. They could ask you, a titanium dioxide nanoparticle has a diameter of 32 nanometers. The diameter of a titanium atom is 0 0.28 nanometers. Estimate how many times larger the nanoparticle is. Because it's just an estimate, let's just quickly round those numbers. So I'm going to round 32 nanometers to 30. I'm going to round 0 0.28 nanometers to 0 0.3. So you can see that the nanoparticle is approximately 100 times larger than the titanium atom. So you could be asked a question like this. A cube-shaped nanoparticle has sides of 10 nanometers. Calculate its surface area to volume ratio. Sometimes it's helpful to just draw a little diagram to help you. So we know that each side is 10 nanometers. Let's start by working on the surface area. So we'll do one of those sides, which is 10 times 10, which is 100, and then just multiply by how many sides there are. There's kind of an invisible line there, so you can actually count the faces. One, two, three, four, five, six. So we can see that the surface area is 600 nanometers squared. What about the volume? Well, we do width times height times length. So that's just 10 times 10 times 10 to get 1,000 nanometers cubed. So our surface area to volume ratio is just 600 to 1000 and then just simplify it. So divide both sides by 600 to get that as your final answer. Now we'll look at some specific uses of nanoparticles. So starting with sunscreen some sunscreens contain titanium dioxide nanoparticles and how they work is they block UV light. And because you're applying such tiny particles, it means that despite the fact that they're white in appearance, you can't see any colour on someone's skin. One disadvantage of these sunscreens is that they can clump together, which makes them difficult to apply. And then the fact that you can't actually see it on the skin, which for lots of people is a good thing, means that you might not know where you've applied sunscreen and you might leave other areas blank. Here's another use of nanoparticles in self-cleaning windows. They have a nanoparticle coating which catalyzes the breakdown of dirt. Now we need to consider the possible risks of nanoparticles. You can say a lot here. They may be breathed in and enter cells where they'll have effects not yet known and they may catalyze harmful reactions in our cells. They could be used to transport toxic substances into our bodies. And the problem is because they're a new technology and it is worth pointing this out, the long-term risks are still unknown. And then one last thing to point out is that silver may be used as a nanoparticle because silver has antibacterial properties. So it can be used in dressings, which are used to cover wounds. problem is when these dressings are disposed, so when they're thrown away because obviously they're dirty, then this silver gets into the environment 
and may have adverse effects on the environment, including all the animals and plants could be harmed. Nanoparticles are very small particles that have unusual properties. Particles less than 100 nanometers in size are classified as nanoparticles. 100 nanometers is, so I said that one nanometer is the equivalent of one times 10 to the minus nine meters. So if you've got one that's 100 nanometers, it's 100 times 10 to the minus 9 meters, but we need that in standard form, so that becomes 1 times 10 to the minus 7. Nanoparticles such as titanium for oxide are used in some sunscreens. Describe a reason why nanoparticles are used in some sunscreens. Because they block UV light and prevent sunburn. Some people are concerned that there's a risk when sunscreens containing nanoparticles are used. Explain a possible risk associated with using nanoparticles in sunscreens. So we said that nanoparticles may enter cells. Their long-term effects are unknown as they are a new technology. Nanoparticles are very small. Some nanoparticles have a radius of 17 nanometers. The radius of a magnesium atom is 0.16 nanometers. Approximately how many times larger is the radius of these nanoparticles compared to the radius of a magnesium atom? So we can make those approximate. So I'm going to do 17 divided by 0.17. The reason I've done that is look, these all in terms of 1, 10, 100, 0 0.1. So my answer is 100 times larger, so the answer here is D. A catalyst contains cube-shaped nanoparticles. Figure 3 shows a diagram of a cube-shaped nanoparticle. The length of each cube side is 9 nanometers. Calculate the surface area. So we do 9 times 9 to get the surface area of one face of the cube to get 81. And then we know that there are six faces. So our answer here is 486. Again, some scientists are concerned about the possible risks. Give one possible risk, may enter cells. It's the same answer again. And catalyze harmful reactions. Explain the advantage of using catalysts made of nanoparticles rather than larger particles. Well, remember, these catalyst particles have a much larger surface area and therefore they increase the rate of reaction. much larger surface area to volume ratio, so they can increase the rate of reaction. Nanoparticles are found in some sunscreens. An atom has a radius of around 0.1 nanometers. A nanoparticle might have a radius of about, so I said between one to 100 nanometers. So that's why C is the answer. The useful property of nanoparticles in sunscreens is that they have the ability to prevent harmful UV radiation reaching the skin. A nanoparticle has a surface area of this and a volume of this. Calculate the surface area to volume ratio. So we do 38,400. You need to make one of those numbers equal one. So you need to divide both numbers by the smallest number, which is 38,400. So we get an answer of 1.3 recurring 